Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. As you may know, this channel is dedicated to the ancient architecture of the world. But from time to time, I do like to deviate from the norm and look at news stories or specific elements of ancient cultures. This video follows on from my recent look at the new geoglyphs found in the Palpa province of Peru that predate the famous Nazca Lines, and I'm looking at this ancient geoglyph in particular, which experts say portrays an orca whale. The 230 foot long figure of the so-called orca, which experts say was considered a powerful semi-mythical creature in ancient Peruvian lore, may be 2000 years old. It is therefore one of the oldest geoglyphs in the Palpa region, and although it was photographed back in the 1960s, its location was lost until very recently. All the experts knew was that it was somewhere in the desert hills of the Palpa Valley. It was rediscovered in a poor condition, due to erosion and the passage of time. Being drawn on a slope, it is far easier for it to be damaged compared to the Nazca lines, that were generally etched onto flat ground. Since its rediscovery, a team of six specialists from Peru's Ministry of Culture have made a concerted effort to clean and restore the orca geoglyph. It was created on the hillside in negative relief, by removing a thin layer of stone to form the outline of the figure, a similar technique used hundreds of years later by the Nazca culture. Some contrasting parts of the pattern, such as the eyes, were created out of piles of stones, a technique used by the ancient Paracas culture, who occupied the region from 800 to 200 BC. The orca whale geoglyph is most likely to have been created by this culture, as the soil dates to around 200 BC. The Paracas culture had developed in the valleys of the Chincha, Pisco and Ica around 800 BC and later occupied the valleys of Nazca and Palpa. It was a theocratic society and based on agriculture and they also made important advances in the production of ceramics and textiles. The geoglyphs of Nazca and Palpa cover an area of 174 square miles and their exact purpose remains a mystery. Of course, like every other unexplained phenomenon in the ancient world, archaeologists think that the images were primarily religious symbols, but I think it is far too simplistic and somewhat dismissive. As I mentioned in my previous video, there is a clear difference in style between the earlier Palpa geoglyphs and the later Nazca lines, and although the latter culture uses the earlier practice of moving loose stone to create patterns on the ground, the meaning of the imagery may be different between the two cultures. In fact, I believe the earlier culture were far more literal in their meanings, whilst the Nazca culture were more esoteric. As mentioned, in this video I'm taking a specific look at this one geoglyph, and I have to say that I believe the orca whale interpretation is in fact wrong. The orca whale has long been believed to be sacred to the ancient Peruvians, and there are ancient ceramic bowls and ornaments very similar in appearance to the orca geoglyph, sometimes portrayed with one human arm. This bowl that was discovered in Nazca is said to depict a killer whale deity, which experts say represented the fearsome strength of natural forces that had to be appeased by sacrifice. This double spouted vessel, also from Nazca, is said to depict an orca whale deity almost identical in form to the Palpa geoglyph, and the human hand is holding a human head. Trophy heads were a common practice in ancient Peru. The head was cut off with an obsidian blade and the skull was punctured and carried with a rope, a barbaric trophy of war. They were then apparently used in rituals and ceremonies. Some say that the ancient Peruvians believed the blood of trophy heads nourished the earth and helped plants to grow. This vessel depicts a killer whale holding a trophy head, but the Palpa geoglyph is not holding a head, but it has two heads inside it and there are two more on a boat in front of it. Even though archaeologists happily attest that the whale god with human heads is a religious icon, to me the geoglyph is showing more of a literal story of the dangers of a specific sea creature. The two human heads inside it is showing that the creature has eaten two people, and two more are either under attack or have already been attacked and killed. The vessel with the sea creature holding the head in its hand is showing that the creature is a strong and fearsome animal, is a threat and danger to humans and should be respected. I don't think the ancient people thought it was some kind of deity, the iconography is all about respect towards nature. But is it actually an orca whale? 
Well, to me, the sea creature in the geoglyph and the various painted images on the ceramic artefacts bears no similarity to an orca whale, and I'm not entirely sure why they have been interpreted in such a way. The sea creatures depicted have more fins than an orca whale, have more slender body forms that bend, and have large heads and large tail fins. Today, orca whales are incredibly rare off the coast of South America, and when they have been spotted, they are generally miles away from the shoreline. And death by orca whales is even more rare, with no recorded fatalities in history. To me, it is obvious that what this geoglyph is depicting is in fact one of the most important animals in ancient Peruvian culture, the shark. Its form is certainly shark-like, with a more slender body, numerous fins, and a large tail in relation to the body size. Having large teeth as well is also diagnostic of many types of shark. Furthermore, although many types of shark are relatively harmless to humans, there are many that are dangerous, and those such as the great white, bull, and tiger sharks do pose a danger to humans, especially when they feel like they are under threat. And, in ancient times, Peruvians certainly were a threat, and there may be evidence of ancient shark attacks. In April 2018, a news story was released into the media about a strange burial site in Peru that dates back to around 100 to 200 BC, in which the ancient inhabitants of a fishing village were found buried with extra body parts, including one shark hunter who was buried with two extra left legs. The 54 individuals buried here were found in 47 pre-Inca tombs at the Lomas La Cruz site in Huanchaco. Alongside these bodies were more than 100 artefacts, including ceramics decorated with maritime themes, coastal animals, and also sharks. This site was actually in use between 1200 BC and 400 AD. The extra limbs were found in approximately 30 of the 54 burials, and were generally arms and legs. The burial with two extra left legs is thought to be a shark hunter due to the artefacts found inside the grave. The individuals who were buried with the additional limbs were also more likely to show signs of trauma compared to other burials, including cut marks to their bones and evidence of blunt force trauma. Some mainstream archaeologists believe that the extra limbs may have served as a sacrificial offering to accompany the dead to the afterlife. Others say they could be the bones of the ancestors, but I think there is a more logical explanation. I don't believe that the bruised and battered human burials were attacked or sacrificed by other humans. To me, these bodies, which archaeologists agree were fishermen, died at sea, most likely from shark attacks, which must have been relatively common if that was the animal they were so commonly hunting as the burial goods seem to portray. The limbs were not placed in their burials as offerings, but this was simply all that remained, or all that was found of those specific people. Maybe each grave was a small fishing crew, or members of one fishing family. I think that shark hunters often became the hunted, and I'm guessing that after shark attacks, sometimes arms and legs were all that remained of some people, whilst others were ferociously attacked and died of wounds. These graves to me are the graves of the fishermen, who died in their prime doing their dangerous job, but being the food providers, these people were incredibly brave, and would have been of high importance to the local population. This archaeological site is associated with various cultures, including the Chimu, Salinar, Viru, and Mocha people. The extra limb burials are specifically from the little-known Viru culture, a pre-Inca culture that flourished at the Viru Valley on the northwest coast of Peru. As mentioned, experts do agree with me that these graves were ancient fishermen. In one grave, researchers found a 4 inch long copper fish hook wrapped in gold foil, which shows just how important these fishermen were. The size of this hook shows that it was used for snaring large fish and sharks. The tradition of hunting sharks goes back at least 4,000 years. In 2010, archaeologists discovered a 3,500 year old building, which they call a temple, used by shark hunters in a small village in Juan Chiquito. The remains of fish bones show us that the blue shark, sand shark, and stingrays were the most abundant types of meat eaten by these people. Excavation showed a ritual offering of a sand shark placed on a reed mat in one dwelling, and an offering of ground shells covered with a sea lion bone wrapped with a portion of sand shark vertebrae in another dwelling. Human burials have also been found with shark remains. 
archaeologist Gabriel Prieto suggests that the reason for using marine animals as offerings could be related to the need to maintain ocean productivity and to satisfy the gods. To this day, sharks surround the Peruvian coastline. Bull sharks have also been discovered in Peru, but not in the sea, but in the fresh waters of the Amazon River. Bull sharks have virtually no tolerance for provocation and may be more dangerous to humans than any other species of shark. One or several bull sharks may have been responsible for the Jersey Shore shark attacks in 1916, which were the inspiration for Peter Benchley's novel and Steven Spielberg's film Jaws. The bull shark prefers coastal waters less than 100 feet in depth. This is mostly due to their feeding patterns since they prefer murky waters. This is also a problem because it gives the most interaction with humans. So, are the so-called orca whale depictions in ancient Peru actually depictions of deadly bull sharks? It is certainly a more plausible idea in my opinion. Interestingly, the experts interpret this ancient Peruvian artefact as a shark and not a whale, but it too bears a striking similarity to the so-called orca whale geoglyph. This painted image on a Nazca ceramic is also apparently a shark, but I don't see how this greatly differs to this Nazca orca whale. The ancient Peruvians hunted sharks for millennia, and as far as I can see, there is no known affiliation with orca whales, no obvious depictions, and no archaeological bone finds. Sharks were important for the survival of the ancient Peruvians, and experts believe it was their main source of meat. As the recent discovery of fishermen burials show, with bruised and battered humans and random body parts, the hunters often became the hunted, and I'm sure that attacks would have been a common occurrence. Hunting sharks for food, honouring the hunter, as well as respecting the sharks, would have all been common practices along the entire coastal settlements of ancient Peru. So much so, that 1,000 miles to the south of the place where shark attacked fishermen were laid to rest, a shark attacking and eating fishermen in a reed boat was drawn onto a hillside. Far from being any sort of religious motif, this was a cultural symbol. It depicts the act of hunting the shark, but it is also honouring and respecting the power, strength and deadly nature of this magnificent beast a universal, cross-cultural symbol of the ancient Peruvian way of life. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.